104.9 XFM, uh, you alright? This is Carl, uh, producer of, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant. They're not about today, Ricky's on holiday, uh, Steve couldn't be bothered, so, um, I'm left here with all the dats, uh, that's, a uh, digital audio tape, uh, of all the, uh, of all the shows they've done since they've been here over the last, I don't know, year and a half or something. So, uh, we'll play you uh, some of the best bits. Alright, so, uh, here's the first bit. I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I don't know, he was looking at me, and I looked back and he went, have you ever used a Y front properly? Genius. It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. Has does anyone use their Wi Fi properly? And by that I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um slot provided, as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Wi Fi properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I caught I caught ya. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. And get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't think I was gay, I double bluffed you. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I knew the old gay trick. <laughs> I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him, uh, did you see that film last night? Gaylord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, is well. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone, anyone listening who's- and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie, wouldn't they, I suppose? Yeah. I don't even use, uh, sort of flies. No? Usually. I sort of, just, sort of, sort of pull my wife on, uh, my sort of tracksuit. So yeah. that's why I wear sort of like elasticated waistbands all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of like- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you gotta get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah, we and out. Sure, sure. Often I won't shake. No, oh, no. To my detriment, because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled <laughs> down your leg and you wish it hadn't, and you're thinking, <laughs> what if she gets my trousers off later? She'd probably smell or see it. What? <laughs> oh, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fill it with the microphone. Well, I was just looking that. at what it was underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know how, where my parents bought this book. I assume it's sort of from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are, generally the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like, kind of, just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or, that this is probably- Or pretty... up in Greg's The Bakers that <laughs> Carl exactly. gets most of his facts from. <laughs> the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But, uh, what's, what, what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's genius, a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they had baboon serving? No, I'll but tell you what happened. You. It might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day when it went, um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said, answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's, it's not, no, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, cause what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're, like I have tr tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like uh, working out that sort of 10%, <laughs> you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon <laughs> restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so tell me someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri because it comes half eaten. <laughs> they can't help their little selves. They really can't. They're okay with, like, you know, the and steak and chips and all that. But you know, there's a little bag. I go, do you want <laughs> Can you imagine that? The baboons serving at waiting tables. It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen and you could go <laughs> If they were serving tickets to two. Uh, yeah, exactly. one child. Okay, go through there. 
Okay. Well, I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of- Pelican, thing. yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. <laughs> because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that they did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, yeah. Just, just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in a week. Um, Go on. There was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Okay, the two gay ones, oh, yeah, go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then, or, yeah, If you shave on. a tiger's head... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head... Not just his head, its whole body. If oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Sorry, I thought you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then, go yeah, on. if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. skin, the skin's... Is it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, like, the, way all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's, I remembered that. Like, I was, was that a drunk just showing it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still striving. Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We well, you know a polar bear. Come on. Polar bear's um, skin is actually um, black, and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion. So it uh, gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If its skin's black, a polar bear's skin's and black. Its fur is translucent, and its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we? Well, it's just because the, the light hits it, and the sun reflects on. Yeah, it. and it makes it look white. Yeah, so if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at night, hair. it would be black. <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you embarrass yourself. Play a record. And I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And, uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't. Yeah. Oh, God. Can't believe so it was the tree that did it. <laughs> and I mean, he was probably the only, and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror, and he liked horror stories, and I, and I told him this story, um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the radio, but I told him this story, um, it was a, it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah, and, um, what it was, it started off just, there'd been a car crash, you see, it was a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate, and he was going, Dave. And he sort of, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror. And then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head and it had been his body. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> Imagine remaking that film, but it's two chickens in horrendous car crash. <laughs> Their would, own fault for driving it. <laughs> it would work. No. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went, about oh, no, five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly was something like, when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen it. Oh, he's, he's, get, he's annoyed, yeah. Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he says, I can get you out of here. So what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that means there's a, been a, yeah. a dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into like the uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the, get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out, and you can run away and escape. Yeah. Right. So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right? And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. All it right, really matters. Okay. Listen, yeah. I, I right. don't know if I'm going to ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back, and she has to get no, buried alive. Be better than yeah. that. So she gets in the coffin, and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's and buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere. So she's thinking, "This is it. I'm getting out." And. uh, 
I mean, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd he'd help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is- <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she is buried alive yeah. and can't get out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, "Actually, I'm getting out of here." Yeah, this isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having yeah. told that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? What was that one you told me about with the uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, this is, now, this we? is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales of Inspect, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like might be a priest or a doctor or something like that, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died, and he owes, a uh, uh, hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff, and, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want to so just pay him, yeah. right? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And they did it, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, we'll start with magazines, not videos then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, um, oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. <laughs> yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but more than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. Look at him nodding like yeah. he's caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do 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 Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises. Occasional it? groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> but I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. Now, have yeah. you thought of that? Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. 104.9 XFM, hello. Uh, I'm Carl. Ricky and, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve aren't here. So we're, uh, we're playing through some of the best bits. I say the best bits. Uh, it's the bits I came across first. I mean, I'm not, I'm not wasting my time. I'm, I'm a busy man, you know what I mean? So, um, here's, here's another bit. What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about you, this? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Uh, Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, ju choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or this is the, this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide, uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what, how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that, you know, wh where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. What will us three look like in the future? I mean, if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be, we be like? How will we be considered in that's society. Fine, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought, that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, well, listen, right, because I remember when, when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. Know, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So I'm growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> all right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right. But <laughs> she had a Why? baby. Why? Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. What it, was she? It was a very. So like being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What does she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Look like make, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make a place look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and. A kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> 
Mostodon. As soon as you know to it. No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of... <laughs> right. Um, oh, um, that's great. I've been Big out. Big Jake. <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> for it. I, I, I've been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or... <laughs> <laughs> Where's he get out? Oh, it's from. What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right, then. But keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catelyn, rustling. <laughs> Oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just, and how long did he have it for? Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! Open the patio door as well! We Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I think... He had a horse? Yeah, right, so... That's why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, I exactly. don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway... Yeah, it's always to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, well, so, well. I, so I was, like, in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and, you know, sort of go back to, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh... The horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This is, what? And when I, when I was doing it, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is tra and genius! It just keeps coming! What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record, let's play a record and come back to this. It's always been just wait, unravel wait. and unravel. It's yeah, yeah. Flowers. Let's it play a track, deeper and deeper, it's yeah, like an on, onion, Carl. isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the lounge. When I, mean, I, I come from the West Country, I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in it. Exactly. This is really... I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. <laughs> right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's get great track. So we were talking. Uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto uh, genetically modified babies. But and then somehow Carl started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you live on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right. Pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's well, relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but well, what I'm trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand what, like, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, <laughs> bit like Pauline Quirk. Quirky, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be important. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I've never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, a daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse. Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they they kept the horse in the house with. Them. They kept it in the house. Did but they they didn't have caught? it for long. No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No. In what there. happened was I was. Um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity, and they said you can do anything to to raise money, and they came out with all these ideas, and I thought that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget the, well, I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's just a good money making so, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked my mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they w did you just cut- you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. <sighs> but I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So, as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they, was, they, they was feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where- no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a Central you know, heating. three piece suite sure. and a telly and that? <laughs> <laughs> telly and that! No, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> 
I was walking through London. <laughs> Commodore 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And you know, like homeless people always have dogs. And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got, that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse, was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know? <laughs> well, not many horses have got their own house. Is that for a start? Yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the point. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, it was a bit. What we were talking about, it was about genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, mm -hmm. right, and Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> So come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah, and uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right yeah. now, you look at Steve, Stephen. This is you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and that. Good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but he used to run around, he used to play out till like 10 at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit. <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of <laughs> chases cars? Oh, God! No. Was it called Rover? Did it catch sticks? It's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> And chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. <laughs> it's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Wow. <laughs> life. wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. <laughs> but am I right? 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. And now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's. It's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to, or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film. You know what I mean. Um, uh, and, uh, his home was to just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff and general well-being. He's not a big happiness, uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've come up with some, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because, a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. Um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that program on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um- <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Be a child yeah. four. He's just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something. Yeah, yeah, Yours come in, really come cold. in. Yeah, TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes. I've um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Right. <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then. Go on. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we? When we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine, and we'll sure. see how. It okay, works. Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm l I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know. Don't no, worry, I know. We're, we're clever. No, we're no, clever. no, we know. We, know, we, know, we can't see. Yeah, I feel like yeah. call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on, then. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh God, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be cold. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point, no, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put it with the rain. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright. Alright, yeah. Okay, hang on. Come on. 
Cat food. <laughs> cat food, come on. He stinks of it. But, if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! I don't know what to say! Imagine this is faking it! Imagine their faces when he says that! And they're going, oh my god! Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, I swear um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yeah. make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. Right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. No, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with a rain and the rainbow, but well, that's Why good. do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, even, well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, a, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at? Uh, I, I kind of thought... Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, well, no, the way I... I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. Well, I've well, used well, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So, like, um... My girlfriend, yeah, um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you got to feed it. But because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little... <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze its little head. No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well that's just the thing that I do with cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yeah. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, that's but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> And he, he came up with the life as a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you say, oh yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> No, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, Obviously planning to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on his mind, and it's, the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the like the lid ripped up a little bit. <laughs> And I'll be looking up there. Yeah. It's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I could have eaten me down the market. <laughs> I know. Pair and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this would, oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he bought for himself at uh, about ten? Penguins. Mm. Who buys penguins still? No. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked Wagon Wheels. <laughs> you not being a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's The Clash and Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother-in-law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, and I think moving in with my sister, and I was about like, um, I don't know, 13, um, and so he was about, I don't know, 30, and I'm moving in, and, uh, he brought round all, um, 
uh, his records, one of his stories, to, to leave them at our house, right? Yeah. And he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, no, I was right. And, uh, um, and, uh, they, uh, put him upstairs. And I was looking through them, and, uh, it's just all like Elvis stuff and Beatles stuff. And there was a mate of mine who loved Elvis, okay? Oh. And he had, um, oh, loads of chemicals, <laughs> yeah. He had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry. And, uh, he said, let's swap me some chemicals for them. So I sort of nicked about five Elvis singles, and I got all these chemicals. And, uh, and then the guilt just hit me. I just thought, well, he's gonna notice that. And I just, and one night, I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him, but you've got to be good. And it's sort of like I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then I remember, um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it. And he said, did you ever, um, uh, play those records I left for you? <laughs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't she? Oh. She, she, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. <laughs> but you've never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't. Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I just, oh, That's it was terrible. terrible. I, I remember, um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And one day, right, uh, that me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh right, well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me, she, she don't want to be in an awkward position and like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round, what have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh God, I said, I've, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like what? So oh, not, not big stuff, I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at seven point two <laughs> per day. So, um, how so many calculators do you need? So, <laughs> so it was when that phase. You failed, mass. Every, <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh yeah. yeah. In Manchester, a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, so I told her all this, and I confessed. To Computers like, will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confessed to this magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confessed to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> she's brilliant. Like, oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. I just sent oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you and he went, hold on, I'm not sure work out the interest on that. <laughs> yeah. I, I bank ten percent. She'll owe you four yeah. pounds forty. <laughs> oh, and did you, so, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um and, uh, I, did 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 uh, did she mention she went, that you I just, I just, stuff with your with that other because yeah, what I'm saying is presumably you've got no, your no, mate in no, trouble. No, 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 no. no you That's know. great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, we've we been waiting for it. What are you gonna play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, lined brilliant. Up. Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Sex <laughs> FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, and Start, We started yeah, off, good. and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin that Robin, you learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh, what I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get him, he never answered me. He was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about what? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Did he mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Th uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin why would he get so sort of uppity about it. Well, imagine because if, it's not true. imagine if he, it, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that, he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robin! 
I, I also, I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said, tell so, you why, though. I said, so Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. Well, Steve, right, do you remember that story about th three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army? He went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um Messing about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? Whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something on, on something, and some worm, of some sort, crawled in the in the gash. Yeah. And um it, it was in his body, and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part of something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrapped where the skull is. So they wrapped some bacon. <laughs> no, they didn't. They did. Ah, that's oh, not right. funny. Everyone... So he's guided by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. <laughs> we put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course, it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard. The skull. There was th there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head. And As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said every, you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Including even worms. a worm, Again. even a even a Vietnamese lake worm. They <laughs> they love they. Oh, they love remember bacon. last week? Remember last week when I said about the little fellow with the bone with no brain, and you were proved wrong. No, Please. no, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just. I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese. There wasn't a there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. No, a little white maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, and so in order <laughs> to get it? out of the he body, they strapped bacon to his head. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what, the worm or the bloke? The bloke. <laughs> oh, dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story. Um, um, right. Just, it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when, and so when what the, the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon. Get to the bacon. Right. <laughs> Um <laughs> That's great. So I this is that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way, you know, Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do, really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you do you do have things like that as a kid. Right. He's the I mean? telling Ricky Gervais though. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away and he <laughs> knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you, can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it, I haven't spoke to him all week, so let me run it by him. Okay, play records. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's Yeah, well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it, and then my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, and this is called To You. It's a good track. <laughs> That's I Am Clute, and a track called To You from the, uh, Teacher's soundtrack that's also got, uh, I noticed the Electric Soft Parade, The Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder, uh, Turing Break, Smoky Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation he's looking smug, because someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm, and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing, isn't so weird," he said. But when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> He's not standing. Strokes hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes, yes. So Carl, concentrate. Here you go on. So we we'll, um, we we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped around the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle, yeah, always carry some 
bit of Danish. <laughs> Good voice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh. Well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what he was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying? Like a pig in, you know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He loads nearly of said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the same? <laughs> yeah. Right, so, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise he'd have been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions. Cause exactly. He's the producer. Yeah. So technically, oh. that twat's in charge. Go yep. on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, and chocolate biscuits, and, uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. So, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. It's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <laughs> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it was, it, what did you sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? So, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yeah. So, well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, they? but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. It, right, it. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? <laughs> what so was on your shirt? <laughs> so I, I was like, oh god, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd eat. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so f f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh god, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I got like a small throat. <laughs> but, but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, f a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. Oh, <laughs> so, so anyway, she's going, oh god, what's he picked up on that now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, it, 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 it hit his nose with a stick. So I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my me, me dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away and he'd gone his to- His share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever <laughs> in a lounge. And I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And um, my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me saying that's what you get for being greedy. <laughs> he didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, <laughs> So it? he's there like that and my mum's going, oh, look at him. And my lips were going purple and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. And it came up, and I was all right. What the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, you see, that's what I don't understand. Because there was no, nothing it, there. No, I mean, just a little bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it, so it went down your, your sort of like your epiglottis. It went down the wrong way, like it went into your air canal instead of your so, throat, and it, it sort of it, it it sort of spasms, and that's the that's the thing. You just got to calm it down and relax. So and in time, I would have been all right. Yeah, anyway. you don't. Um, well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's, so, 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 so that's hang on, so, but, but, so, no, 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 but the weird thing is, like, for, like, three days after that, I felt like a sort of, a uh, special person. <laughs> I was, I went to school. I'm I did, that, I'm saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> Yeah. I went, I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days, turn over <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. After yeah. three days, you thought, screw it. Yeah, well, did, did a quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. Mm. Right, next that one. Weird. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell, we call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> And he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you know, oh. you, you, <laughs> you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, 
you sort of you're around. spreading information well, to yeah, people, vital yeah, information. You're giving a service, yeah. and no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's riding around <laughs> I know, I can't. Oh, so, <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I, I loved it, and even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and, uh, go and do the round, and, um. Why'd you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at 5.30, so I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah, so is it a good job or not? So 4.30 four, four I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow, I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it, I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on, with the third on. I had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out, and tried to open the door, and it was locked. So, oh, God, so, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. So I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out of the window, and I'd, 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 I'm like, try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, yeah. the little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding onto the, like, the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand with using a... <laughs> he's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing. A big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just hold on for your dear life, and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's right. at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so and you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! I think that <laughs> Hurry the up! Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. So, he th uh, uh, to cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences, and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well I don't check my balls. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check don't yours? Like the feel. Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other nine. We're playing out some of the best bits. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. His homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we might, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the, uh, Oh, um, the Romeo and Juliet, right? Romeo's asleep on the bed, Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass. What happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's, Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, oh, what am I thinking? Yeah. Yeah, go on then, Carl. Right, um... Yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right? He's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, <laughs> and all his mates come running up, and they're all stood round him. Yeah. And, uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That why, is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uh, laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real ones. Absolutely. A bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running. Is, up is, like, oh. Wasn't it? Was it important that his head was cut? Um. 
I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it have been okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. What, what's your answer? No, you mean to answer a question. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, where's the turn? So you go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of a motorcycle stunt team or a parachute Why, why didn't they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something, or... Well, yeah, but if you mark, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> Angry. What? They're parachutists. <laughs> why, can't they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. Still... But he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they... But they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor as they're well. They're walking, they? are they? Yeah, well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking they're at him. They're soldiers. Why? But why? If they're Because it might be in a battle zone. They might have their helmets zone. on, and he's, he's been no. shot in the head. No. They... Well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. <laughs> that one works. That one works. Unless you give us a piece of information where that doesn't work, what, yeah. what, what's the difference? Why, do, why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't, don't think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already <laughs> guarded a little bit. So th they could take their hats off. It's the best mate, for God's sake. <laughs> I said he's dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? Well, go ahead and the answer. No! Don't get right! What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball well, hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Wow! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened, it was set yeah, up, wasn't it, in the studio, though. we know that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl, what's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly! <laughs> right. Let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl. Uh, and, uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't know <laughs> why. No, he probably came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. <laughs> there was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this gun not clean? I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were <laughs> shining. Well, he's well, he's got to do that, it's more distant. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you gotta do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's what I do, you gotta check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the, the Falklands or, you know, the Gulf I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? I go, you hit the back, yes? It will be horrible. <laughs> it, it will be horrible, yeah. yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I go, right, I'm not gonna go. And they go, <laughs> okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. That should be fine, yeah. Just got to go. Does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> then. <laughs> my brother, my brother went into the army, right, cause, um, cause he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. <laughs> And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight? Eighty-one. Right. And he joined back in, like, eighty-one or something. And, uh, he, 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 I don't know, he was in older shot or something. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he wrote back to me mum saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So, she wrote... <laughs> what bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all like, dear dad, yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to her, like, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go. Which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, w we'll see how it goes. But can what? you tell What her? do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, 
Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, cos she was really- she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? We're not really- oh please, cos I've promised her I'll- say you wanna go. No, please, say you wanna go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, I mean the sergeant. Right. Uh, I don't know, so maybe they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. <laughs> you can't do it! But you that's ludicrous! Uh, so I love it though. Oh, okay, we're over the top. No, I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this- is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in order. They- you- it, cause I noticed it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go, go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's going, my mum says don't yeah. go into the You didn't is write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. You're, you're, you're gonna have to just, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure if- if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort and they sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh no, obviously- But were the, the other soldiers going around just going, <laughs> Bilkington! <laughs> No, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't uh, believe that, Carl. You've Honest that. to God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your- your brother's a genius. I love this, I love this. Well, first of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, go and let him up, and goes, oh god. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is- where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's- where is he? he um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is- no, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hands? <laughs> tell him to walk, this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did, I was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> so let him off this him. time. Can he- yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about eleven years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off, but I think if you're a certain type of person, it's good, it's good for it you. It didn't straight in me, how did it? Know. He was going down the shops in a tank, he was shagging someone no, behind their it's yeah. really weird, it's like back then, he was like a proper adult and he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he oh, has I, I seriously, I haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so I haven't even spoken. It always start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. <laughs> Can we take Carl to the- uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Cos it's just too stressful. <laughs> this is what I'd like to leave you, uh, with a song for the ladies. Start this on the edge of town from the amazing album of the same name. Feed up. Come back around. On XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Yeah, I'm with him as well, Steve Merchant. I was thinking of dropping that. What? I was thinking of dropping that, just going, because it's just too, that's all that. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton too. I mean, get to the music, so it's, hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, this is XFM. Sure. Here's Radiohead. Yeah. Some like, come out, that was Radio and XFM, I'm Ricky Gervais. Tony Blair, what's he all about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of, snap on yeah. fast, because I quite, on a serious note, and you've always been saying it, um, I listened to an old show, cos when Carl was compiling those things, I listened to an old show, and I listened to me, and I'm- I'm really concentrating now, because I sounded like the most inarticulate, brain-damaged old drunk <laughs> I have ever heard given a show. Yeah. I mean, I was shocked, not finishing sentences, leaving out words, slurring, just doing noises yeah. that you understand because you know me. Yeah. So I'm really gonna make an effort for the listener. Yeah. It's not gonna happen, is it? You're gonna but, give up after about three But I records. thought you were joking. And I thought it was like, mm -hmm. oh, he's taking the- there? Did it yeah. then, you see? Again, I don't quite know what that sentence meant. No, but- Well, of course, I've got also your body language and your facial yeah. gestures, but obviously the listeners have got nothing else, got they've got just got the in. voice. They've yeah. just got the voice for it, that's all they've got, that's all they can rely on. Yeah. And, uh, and when Carl Pilkinson is the man holding the show together- When he's the that's most quite articulate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. How, how did I come across? You came across as lovely. I mean, I, I did an interview yesterday, right? And I was trying to describe you to this journalist, and I was going, it's like a cat can talk. Hmm. Because the things you say, I just want to know what your world is. You know when a cat comes in, you go, where have you been? And it looks as you're like- you know, you can- it can nearly understand you, and you're like, I wonder- I'd love to know what that cat thinks. And with you, it's almost like we've got one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like that? No, you no, can no. also lick your own no. testicles, I think, can you? <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Do you play the doves? 
And you're listening to Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Welcome. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. <laughs> Were you asked to appear on Celebrity Fat Club? No, I, I, uh, no, was there I any? Was there? Was there? Seriously, did an invite? Come no, in? I, don't, I don't think they did. I, I, I knew about it, and I was waiting for the call, and I was yeah. going to be insulted, but it didn't come. It didn't come. It didn't. How come. much are you looking forward to it? <laughs> I'm quite excited about it. I, I, I really am. excited to it. Yeah. I don't yeah, know I'm if people know. Are you aware of this, Carl? This is this celebrity fat club. It's a new uh, one of those reality shows. It's ten celebrities, I think. They're all overweight, uh, and they've got to lose weight over the course of the series. And they're um. And they're celebrities. And they're celebrities. That's why I've called it that. Celebrity Fat Club. Sorry yeah. for the gut. Well, I'm very excited because one of them is, you know that guy who was in Pop Idol but didn't win in the end, that really big fat guy, Rick, Rick. Waller. Fats Waller, as I call him. And, uh, I was reading about him on the, in the, uh, on the web earlier. Um, it says, uh, he's been told to lose 17 stone. Because they reckon he might be dead by the age of 40 if he doesn't lose weight. Seriously. How old is he now? I don't know how old he is. He's only in his 20s, isn't he? Well, that's still a good but 20 it says, years it says of cake it, it says, uh, he was shocked to find he weighed 31 stone when he stepped on the scales at the start of the show. 31 stone? 31 stone. But I love that's the fact- That's really big. I like the fact it says he was shocked to find he weighed it. Yeah. I had no inclination. I'd got- I'd got- I'd got- I kept my eye off the ball. That, <laughs> exactly. I? That must be all those breakfasts. I haven't stood on the scales for years and I didn't know how much I weighed, Rick told the son. 31 stone, right, that is having- that is- that is having a man on your back and carrying a man in your just walk, yeah. basically two men are going everywhere. It is obscene because he looks. Have you seen him? He looks like one of those people who's wearing one of those inflatable sumo outfits. Yeah, he's just a little head and like a sort of. Oh, we're not. We're not having a go at um, fat people. I'm having a go at him, Rick. No, because it might be glandular. It's not. It's Greek. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what? I, this is true. I, when I did, I did that room 101, and I did one. They cut out completely. I don't think I'd cut it out on taste. I think it was just too long. Um, and I, and one of the ones I put in was fat people who say it's glandular, right? And they'd done the research and. Two percent of obese people can claim it's glandular. The rest, they just eat too yeah. much. But right? the thing about Waller is he was going on there, going on the telly, going, it's good, what a wonderful role model I am for people who don't conform to the usual pop star sort of stereotype. No, you're not a role model for anyone. You are a fat pig of a man. I'm sorry, right, but you are- No, right. Rick, but it's, be honest with you, it is obscene. It's not his weight that d disturbs me more, it's his gums. Well. They're all, oh, they've been through a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Haven't they? <laughs> they have been The weight a lot. does consume me slightly. Did you- do you remember when he did his version of I Will Always Love You? Yeah, but the-, the I thought he was just singing about it like a buffet or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Outside the chip shop. <laughs> yeah. Go away, Mr. Waller. Yeah. Do do, no, just- just let me watch the, uh, kebab rotate <laughs> once more. No! Can I lick the fat off the floor? No! <laughs> you can't. I just imagine those people who run all-you-can-eat buffets, when they hear him coming, they shut yeah. the door. We it's close. like a, it's one of those 1920s speakeasy. The front changes <laughs> into like a laundrette. <laughs> Just move on, fats. It's not. <laughs> it's, I can smell chip fat. No, 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 no. Move but, on. On you but, go. But um, I mean, we're not Olympic fat Brits. They are also fat. The thirty-one stone is sort of you know quite big. But the American, that one. Did you see that one? Seriously, we talked about it before. That one on Jerry Springer, and he was seventy-five stone. Did you see seventy-five? He was in his bed. Honestly, it looked like a. It looked like a. Um, uh, I don't know, sort of molten lava yeah. in his bed. And it was really, it was actually sad, and I was really sad, because he was, you know, he was in tears and he was going, this is it, I'm gonna do it. And Jerry Springer took the wall down and they got him, that to get him in a special ambulance and everything. But my point is this, right? When he got to say 50 stones, didn't he go, that's a lot, innit? I gotta be careful. For a human. Exactly. You know, for, for someone <laughs> yeah. that lives on land. Yeah. That yeah, is, exactly. that is, I tell you, what the, I mean, the fact is they have to have special weighing equipment, so wasn't that a clue? That must have been. The fact they had to get in someone from next door to lift up a bit to tell him yeah. how much he weighed. Yeah, the fact that he featured on the Ordnance Survey map <laughs> should have been a clue <laughs> that We've given it's you your own mess. Yeah, you are, yeah. Stop eating. eating. Oh. Great tune. I was listening to Copper Blue, the album from which yeah. I was taken again. It's just fantastic. Old it really moldy. Was. Old moldy. Moldy old dough, yeah. as I call oh, it. exactly. Bob. You've got a real problem with Rick Waller, haven't you? I just- he's, I, he's he, he turns my stomach. I know, but don't- Because he's arrogant that. as well, exactly. though. Exactly. That's don't, the problem. Don't, don't explain to people that- No, he know, is a bit it's arrogant. His, it's his, it's his whole thing that you, it's the whole package, so yeah. to speak, that you don't Well, like. there's another thing in this quote, because, uh, it's he's It's not just the fact that he eats too much. He, uh, he's, he tried, apparently, to lose some weight, and, uh, it says- he said, the first month I lost eleven pounds, the next I lost a stone, but in the third my body did somersaults and I put on nine pounds. I had a slip up. Yeah. I can't say when, why, or how, but it just sneaked up on me. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. Don't it's believe it just sneaked that, up on that him. That body's never done a somersault no. in its life. No. It just uh, sneaked, sneaked up, up on him. Me, yeah. I, that's, uh, that's it that. was the cakes again. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same old <laughs> cakes as before. It was exactly the same Sli problem. Sleep eating. Yeah. It's called. It was the KFC bucket again. Oh, it was the oh family dear. size KFC bucket oh, for breakfast. Dear. 
Poor man. The other thing is that the, I don't think that's a very good shock tactic for a doctor to tell a twenty-something. Well, to be honest, you've got twenty years to live. Yeah, that's not. You know, and when I was 20. twenty, the thought of dying at forty was fine. Yeah, I didn't want to live to forty. Yeah. I just thought, oh, what can you do when you're forty? Yeah, just laying around <laughs> doing nothing, <laughs> eating, eating cheese. cheese. And then you got there, <laughs> and you discovered <laughs> no. But someone said dreams came um, true. Sophia sent me something, and she said, I, I realise you're not Graham Norton, but I had to send you this. And she sent me the top of a little cream cheesy thing, and it's, it's, the brand name is Gervais. How oh, god, that from, is, from have you been, they've named a cheese after I think you? It, I think it's a big French company, and this is from the Czech Republic, it's all over Europe, and so it That would be a dream come true, it, wouldn't it, if they named a cheese after no, you? No, I think it's, I think it's, uh, probably, you know, ancestors, and so I've cheeses in my blood. Sure. Quite it literally. It literally is, yeah. yeah. It, Another heavy Friday it, night, was it? It, 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 it comes out of pores like those Play-Doh things. Yeah. I can squeeze out different shapes. Jane, I bring the Stilton in, <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't nice. fried. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, we can't really have a go at Rick Waller. I, 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 I eat too much, but, but I, you, I, Yeah, I, but I you're not big. I mean, the, one of the other contestants on that, on the, uh, Fat Club Celebrity oh, is, Fat Club, is uh, another one is Jono, Jono Coleman. Oh, we love Jono. Now, Jono, he's, he, I don't know, you know Jono, he's oh. that guy who does, um, he used to be on TV and I think he does a breakfast show on a rival station, doesn't he? He's happy, isn't he? He's, he's so trivial. And he's a really nice bloke, Jono, but- It's funny, cos he does a breakfast show on Heart, which is, he's wrecking his own. There's a bit of irony. <laughs> I love Carl. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I love no, you. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's good. But we've met yeah. John a couple of times. We saw him at a couple of, not wishing to say not uh, to show off, but a couple of awards do's. Yeah. And like that's showing off. But like people would have seen dead there. Well, yeah, but yeah. we, <laughs> we went to one where everyone was in like tuxedos oh, or suits yeah. and ties. Not Jono. <laughs> Jono was wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Big Bermuda and shorts. And a length Bermuda shorts with just these little... But I saw him again time another feet. time and he had shorts on. At yeah. a similar event, and I've seen him since in the street, and he's all. I don't think. I'm wondering if he can wear trousers. I don't think he can actually wear trousers. I don't know if there's a medical reason for that. Whether he's just his no, legs th are too fat. I think the material is a waste of money. I think it's just yeah. that you can get shorts that big and they're comfortable. And uh, you know, you, I mean, to be quite honest, well, what, I don't want to squeeze into a tuxedo anyway. Mm. So uh, if you can go, I'd love to turn up those things in Bermuda shorts. Well, of course, flip flops. You know, but do you think he started off by wearing, maybe he just had the upper half as a tuxedo with the tie and, and then the shorts for And the shorts that. underneath and he would just have to come in to kind of sneak behind, you know, a, a sideboard. Potted plant. Or a potted plant. Or his kids, bring his kids ahead of him. Yeah. You know, and you're wearing clothes, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah in you yeah. go, in you go. Kids move a bit. Well, no, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Of course I'm wearing trousers. Why would I? Wear in trousers. And they just thought, oh, this isn't fooling yeah. anyone. So uh, now I'm going to make a wacky effort to sort of, you know. The next zone it. is, I've heard he's going in a grass skirt and a mm. garland around his, and he's yeah. going to come in limboing. But you you did ask if you could go to the BAFTAs in a dressing game, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> so for ease. Yeah. Yeah. But, come um, on. Right, is this talking about diets and stuff, right? Go on. They've come up with a drug that, um, they, they tested it out on a mouse, right? They said, they said, you know, it's a problem that weight, weight is a big issue in the world and, you know, a lot of people are depressed and that, probably like Rick Waller. Well, right? I'm depressed looking at Rick Waller. Well, you know. Oh. I mean, you could, you could sort out Rick by, you know, Jono is an old man, he's got loads of money. He's not old. No, but he's getting on a bit, right? He's about no, but what, hang on a minute. what I mean is he does his own shopping, right? So, I bet it's Sorry? Hard. What do you mean? Because he's like, uh, how old is he? Thirty-five. Right? Oh, he's got loads of money, he does his own shopping, so when he yeah. goes to the supermarket and he passes, you know, the, the sponge cake section, <laughs> it must be tough when you've got loads of money to burn that you go, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more. Look, uh, so just, uh, we are getting close to libel here, I think. No, 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 <laughs> I'm saying how it is, because I've, right. I've tried, like, losing a little bit of weight. Have you? And it is difficult when you, you know, you're in Waitrose and you see a little chocolate muffin and think, well, <laughs> one more and I'll do without... Do you like a little chocolate muffin now and well, again? Yeah, right. Is that your favourite thing? So a, the thing a is... Let him finish his point. So the thing is, right, now with Rick, he lives at home with his mum, so why doesn't his mum just say, I'm gonna buy less this week, and if you eat it all, you're not getting any more? Yeah. <laughs> that, that sort of... That does out. he live a short, with his mum? Shop. I bet he does. I bet he does. Cause <laughs> so he you, you don't actually know if this is true <laughs> or not. No, but but anyway, right? So this this drug they've come up with. <laughs> they've tested this on mice, haven't they? They've tested <laughs> it. No, I'm just I'm worried if they haven't tested it on mice. <laughs> Thank God for that. It's definitely been tested on mice. Definitely. They, they fed a mouse a load of cake. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and it went a little bit chubby, and he said, "Right, stop a minute." And then they gave it this drug yeah. that makes you lose weight. Yeah. Oh. And it, its weight went down, but the only bad so side effect was its eyes were popping out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems, that seems to be fine then. Let's give it to Jono. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problem. Oh, with that. That's, 
Yes, uh, yeah, it's Richard that gets that that. Yeah, Yeah, Struth, Doc, look at these. Oh, Jesus, John, your eyes are popping out. That happened to the mice. Mm. Sorry? <laughs> that happened to the mice. Mm, but what, what do, do you mean? That's the option. <laughs> But, like what do you mean that's the option? So, so I love the fact that your choice is either be like a fat, happy man who has the odd sponge cake, or a stick man with eyes on stalks. I mean, Steve's <laughs> chosen that. All right, calm down. Oh, sorry, I thought we were slagging off Rick Waller sorry, and fat mate. people. Sorry, Let's mate. have a go at the fat people yeah, before we sorry. start on me, Rick. Yeah, no, I didn't. I forgot. You know I mean, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I got some issues, some body issues. I you know. know. But they, I mean, Rick Waller's grotesque, you know. Yeah, sorry about I'm that. I'm just a little bit weird. <laughs> I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah, should we play a song? And well, I'm just a little bit offended. One hundred four point nine. You're listening to the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant. And well, we've, got, oh, we've got to try and get on though. Got got time not enough. No, not enough time. Let's let's bang on. Let's do some observations. Some satirical. Take a sideways look at the week's news. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's the uh, fattest person you know, Carl? Is uh, it an issue for you? Are you are you concerned about fat people? Only if I'm travelling somewhere and there's one sat next to you. That'd yeah, be a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Ricky pointed out a few months ago when I when I went away, we were talking about plane journeys, and you were saying how it's a bit out of order. How when you go on holiday, right, you take your suitcase with you. Mm -hmm. I'm a r this is all Was right. I saying this on air though? Is this my question? Because there's there's a reason I don't say things. No, no, on no, air no. Sometimes. But I think you've got a good point. It made me think. <laughs> oh no, it's w I know what it was. Yeah, yeah. Go on. It's sort of like if if you're not allowed to carry handbag, John, because you're a few pounds overweight, but there's a bloke behind you who weighs ten stone more than you. Yeah. Surely the whole package should be weighed. Yeah. Like you and your baggage. Absolutely. Can he, be should have, he should have a carrier bag. And so that's... I can so I can take on uh, a Labrador and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. He can take on um, a towelette. Yeah, yeah. To wipe absolutely. his brow. Yeah. His sweaty, Packet. fatty brow. Yeah. yeah. No, I absolutely, <laughs> absolutely right. So, yeah. uh, and that does yeah. wind you up, does it? But I don't, that's the only time. I mean, people can't help it. We don't want to, like, come across as if we're just having a go at people who've got... But they can help it. This is what we're saying. <laughs> No, but no, that's, but that's a little bit. But I'm talking about obesity. I'm not talking about people who are overweight or have got a problem with with eating and so on. I'm talking about people who are obese because that read to me to be an indulgence. I mean, no, I read no, no, some no, statistics. Well, 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 if we're getting serious, it, it is a problem, isn't it? Because it, it's an eating disorder. So what what what's what's terrible is is laziness and kidding yourself. But the people who have, have genuinely got a problem. But it's a genuine concern for apparently or... for the future of our children. Apparently, it genuinely is. Yeah. Apparently, it costs. I was reading some statistic that it costs something like uh, America. It costs. Some like 119 billion pound dollars a year or something. But that's not why people are obesity. starving, because fat people are eating all the food. I'm not There's saying people are starving because of fat people. Oh, you mean- I'm you mean, saying that it's a- no, I'm saying it's a concern- Oh, we meant we soon have kids and they're hungry because next door they all the food. No, I just <laughs> mean that, it, that apparently because exercise now, people aren't taking up exercise, kids right. aren't taking up exercise, that we will all be obese in years to come. Not all obese, but yeah. there'll be a, a big obesity. Well, I suppose the natural state for the mammals is we crave fat. We literally fa crave fat for, for hard times, but now- but now there are no- well, you're all saying but, your, but, but our body haven't evo hasn't evolved yeah. to, to take our social uh, input in, yeah. so we still act like mammals, mm. and we we eat and we crave it, and we like to store fat. Yeah. That's why we have to go jogging because we don't we don't hunt, we don't do anything. So it it it's not really their fault. You've got, it's, it, it, I mean, it is about willpower and, and sort of like you know self. <laughs> Hate but in years that, to come, we'll have just pictures, like kids will just have pictures of, they won't have NSYNC on the wall, it'll be uh, like sumo wrestlers. Mm. Oh, or, um, oh, 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 you know sumo wrestlers? I saw this thing about sumo wrestlers. Um, cause the, the, they, they're athletes, they go into the, to this thing cause it's a big honour to be a, a sumo. It's absolutely really? true, right? Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. So, you'd go along and you'd be nine stone, and you, they, they have doctors there, so you have to eat to get big. Right? right, and this doctor was interviewed. Jeremy's so doctor, and he's going, you know, it, it is against. You'd think it's against the Hippocratic Oath, <laughs> um, but um, whereas they do it anyway, I do it healthily. So he sells them. He gives them diets of like. Uh, you know, ten pounds of rice, wow. nine pounds of fish, and things like that, and they get. But now, because it's such an honour, it's almost a spiritual thing to be a great sumo and that. Um, they have apprentices willing to now you know like when you're an apprentice say um uh runner or something you have to make the coffee and you know, uh, when you're working an apprentice in the studio you have to clean the floor and stuff do you know what apprentice sumo's job is an apprentice sumo go on they wipe mm. the sumo wrestler's ass because they can't reach they literally can't reach rubbish so, uh, right uh, can, what, we'll give who's up the taking now. that up as a profession I know. I imagine that. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be a sumo wrestler. It's a great honour, and I'd love to work under you. Uh, sure. So, uh, sure. So, uh, what will I do? Start press ups first. There'll be uh, some press ups. Yeah. Okay. There yeah. Will be what some should I get ups. into the gym now? And uh, no, uh, I, don't before you rush go off. Go on. Go on. You I'm like, starving. No, I can understand that. Go do on. You d would you mind wiping my arse? Right. Because I've just. 
can't reach? No. Got no, I can't get the arms back there. Can't okay. get them down there. So, uh, and I tell, but, but I'll be honest with you, a lot of this oriental food, it doesn't sit well with me. So it goes straight through me, to be honest. So it's quite messy. It's quite messy down there. It's right. quite runny. Okay. So okay. be careful. Okay. Um, no, you wear some gloves. Honor. If you want to wear gloves, wear I gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, not a, it's an honour. This apprenticeship is two years, isn't it? You're, no, you're not going to take my feces and salad, are you? As souvenirs or something? No, no, it no, is, no. I, I will be mainly getting fat myself. Sure. Wiping your ass. Yeah. Great honour. <laughs> yeah, no, good. Well, Great honour. If someone could call in and verify that. Look, Carl, look at Carl looking at us like we've just said the worst thing ever. This is true, like, apparently. Makes your eyes pop out and put in Forrest Gump in a wheelie bin. Don't look How at us like that. This is a. We're talking cultural science here yeah, and, yeah. and wiping asses. Yeah. So. Play a record. <laughs> yeah, it's low brow <laughs> and it's high brow at the same time, Carl. Sure That's that an incredible right? picture. Oh, yeah, this is for all you people who who uh, who like the odd cake. This is Bowie and.